Hello there, I'm Fernanda, and today I'm going to give you even more tips to keep your clothes looking new for as long as possible. Welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new. It is important to take good care of our clothes, not just for us so that we feel good and confident when we put them on, but also if we want to sell them after we no longer want to wear them, the better care we took of them while they were in our possession, the more likely we're going to get a lot more money out of them and we're able to recoup our investment. This is part two of the make the most out of your capsule wardrobe series. If you missed part one, I'll link it for you in the cards above. And in this video, we're going to cover best storage practices, both day-to-day -day storage and long-term storage for off-season clothing, the best way to manage and prevent pilling, the best way to manage and prevent infestations, and I'm going to give you a great tip to follow for when you've just thrifted an item. And before we get into it, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell if you want to be notified every time I post a new capsule wardrobe video. Let's get started. How you store your clothing will drastically impact what it looks like on you when you are actually wearing it. Some pieces respond a lot better to folding, while others respond a lot better when they are hung. A basic rule of thumb I can give you is you want to hang anything that wrinkles easily or that is heavily starched. Things that are made out of silk or a very, very fine material, things that you want to keep their shape like a blazer or something like that. And I personally like to fold skirts that have a lot of excess fabric. So not like a pencil skirt, but like the skirts on my capsule wardrobe video, which I also will link above. Those skirts I would rather hang. When it comes to hanging tops in particular or dresses, you want to make sure that you're inserting the hanger from the bottom because you don't want to stretch out the collar or ruin the shape of the fabric. So in this case, I have this little top that I love and it's a silky material and you want to start from the bottom and then gently drape it over the hanger. Like so. And then if there is something that you need to fasten, you just want to make sure that everything is fastened all of the buttons so that the garment keeps their shape. And as far as hanging skirts go, you want to get a hanger that has clips like this. In this case, these are removable. I just got them extra so that I could turn any hanger into a skirt hanger because depending on the, work, on the season, I either need more of these or less of these. So these you can just attach really quickly and then you just put the clips like so. And then I'm ready to hang this item without it wrinkling a ton. And as far as folding goes, you really want to fold anything that I didn't just mention in the category above, especially anything that is very heavy and would bend a flimsy wire hanger, you know, the kinds that they give you at the dry cleaners, definitely fold that. Anything with elastic in the blend of the material, you definitely want to fold like your fleecher or your leggings, because if you do fold them, or if you, sorry, if you do hang them over time, the elastic in the fabric will pull down on the hanger, causing the garment to lose its shape. So definitely fold those. Anything with embellishments like beading that would be too heavy on a hanger or even sequins, you're better off protecting them if you fold them. And you can even put a thin layer of white tissue paper between that and another garment to protect it. And your knits. Definitely your heavier knits do not hang because those will stretch the same way as your athleisure on the hanger over time, causing the fabric to deform and causing the item to lose its shape. And as far as thin knits go, you don't have the problem of stretching as much as you do with a heavier knit. But then what you do get is those shoulder bumps from the hanger that are really difficult to get out. Now, if you're short on folding space and you really need to hang a thin knit, the best way to do it is as follows. Fold it in half lengthwise and then lay the hanger down so that the hook of the hanger is facing the armpit out. And then fold both the sleeve and the torso of the garment over the top part of the hanger so that you can hang it properly and it won't lose its shape. I personally fold most of my clothes both because it's easier for me to see where everything is but also because I feel like it takes up less space and obviously less hangers, even if it's skirts or a dress especially if it's something that sits very close to my body. For that, I'm not really concerned that it'll get wrinkled because the second I put it on, it'll attach to me and it'll smooth out the wrinkles. So I feel like I'm better off. When it comes to dressing for the seasons, I personally prefer to put anything that is off season away. Because when I wake up in the morning, I only want to be able to realistically wear everything that I see in my closet. If it's the middle of the summer and there's a wool turtleneck sweater in there, it's like, 
Why is that there? I can't even wear it. So I just put it away onto long-term storage. Now, here are the best practices when it comes to storing your clothes for a long term away from your closet. You want to make sure that everything you put away is newly washed and really completely clean. Because if there's any bacteria or any larva which turns into moths or anything like that, then you run the risk of those clothes and not just the one piece, but all of the clothing getting damaged over time. It can grow a little bit yellow, it can grow something of a smell or even more mold or mildew. So you're better off washing everything properly before you store it away. I actually did not know this, but turns out that plastic is terrible for storing your clothes over time because your clothing is fabric and fabric needs to breathe in order to keep its integrity and in order to keep its shape. So if you're storing your clothes in plastic bins, you're really better off using zippered canvas bags or zippered canvas cubes. I personally don't have any of them, but I will link to some that I found online below for you guys. These will do a great job of protecting your clothes from dust and vermins and moths because they can get in through the zipper while still letting your clothing breathe so that it doesn't harbor any bacteria. You just want to make sure that you store the canvas bag in a cool, dry, completely dry, free of humidity place. And another tip, don't put any cedar wood or moth repellents or anything like that in these bags. Those have a chance of seeping or leaking oil, which can damage your clothing and stain it over time. So if you do have a concern of pests, you're better off using one of those lavender pillows that I showed you in the video from last week. Those are great at repelling pests and they will keep your clothing protected over time. Turns out that plastic is in general not good for clothes at all. So if you go to the dry cleaners and come home and they have that plastic sleeve over it, you have to take it off immediately because all you're doing is letting the garment seep into those chemicals that it was cleaned in, which is not great for the garment, but it's also not great for you when you finally take off that sleeve and then put it on. You're breathing in all that stuff. So as soon as you get home, take it off, air it out, and then you can put it in your closet. I struggle with lint and pet hair big time because buttercup sheds like crazy. And for this, I have two options for you guys. You can either use a lint brush or a lint roller. They pretty much do exactly the same thing, except one you can use over and over again, and the other one you need to buy refills and it produces waste. I did a ton of research on whether one or the other damages your clothes more over time. Any friction that you put on your clothes is bound to cause a little bit of damage and it turns out there is not. So if you prefer to use a lint brush, you're good to do that without fearing that it'll damage your clothes. That's what I personally use and I find it works really great. The only problem is that you have to clean it after every use. Pilling or those small balls of fluff that form in the surface of an item are caused by friction. Friction happens both when we move, like if we move our arms a lot, chances are we're gonna get some pilling on the sides of our shirts or where we sit or if we're, you know, moving a lot, that will cause natural friction. But also when we wash or dry an item, if it's rubbing against something heavier in the washing machine, chances are that that will cause pilling as well. Essentially, the more wear and wash that an item gets, the more pilling it gets, but there are ways that you can prevent it. First, when you're shopping, look at the materials on the label of a garment. Avoid buying blended materials because the blended materials have fibers that are different sizes and that will cause the fibers to break more often, therefore causing more pilling, especially if these are not very high quality garments. So avoid blended fabrics. Second is turn your clothes inside out when you wash them. This will not prevent pilling from happening per se, but it'll just make sure that it'll happen on the inside of your garment, so at least it's not as noticeable when you're wearing them. And third, just avoid as much friction as possible. Don't wash an item in the regular cycle in the washing machine, just always use the delicate cycle. And if you have something you really, really like or that is particularly sensitive, just hand wash it so that it can avoid friction with another garment at all and that way you don't have pilling at all. Now, if it's a little too late and you already have pilling in your clothes, the good news is that it can be removed. You can use one of three things. You can use a sweater shaver, which I'm sure a ton of you guys have seen. Those are great for removing the surface of the item and removing all of that fluff away. Second, you can use a sweater comb. They usually come in different weights, so if you have cashmere or wool, something like that, it'll be a different one from heavier knits. And third, you can use a sweater stone, which I've personally never used because the idea of rubbing my sweater with a 
harsh stone sounds terrifying to me, so I've never tried it. But the internet says that it works great, so I'll link to you guys to a couple of them below on Amazon, and if you have tried one, let me know in the comments below. Moths and bed bugs are in fact an infestation. So if you do find an item that either has damage from one of them or even worse, the actual creature on it, chances are that the rest of your wardrobe was also compromised. So you're just better off cleaning everything that you have. These creatures are actually attracted to dirty clothes, but having said that, they won't just appear in your wardrobe, they have to be brought in. And they usually come in through an item that was thrifted and not properly cleaned, or a gift from somebody else, or just like if you go to the laundromat and like not clean it properly, chances are you will attract the moths themselves. Now, if you don't presently have an infestation, you just wanna make sure that you're sifting through your clothes often for two reasons. One, the more you move your clothes and the more you shake them out, the more you're letting gravity do the work for you. And in the event that there is something there that you cannot see, you're causing it to fall to the ground. But second, if you do find something right away, then you can get ahead of it really quickly. And just a reminder, particularly when it comes to moths, you are not looking for the moth themselves. You're looking for their eggs or larva. That is what causes moth holes and they will rip through anything, whether it's polyester or whatever it is, to get through their source of food, which is usually wool, silk, or cashmere. Now, if it's a little too late and you already have an infestation, then you wanna treat your entire wardrobe to extreme temperature, either extreme heat or extreme cold. We've already established that extreme heat is really bad for your wools and your cashmeres, but then we have the opposite end. Make sure that you put everything into Ziploc bags and put it into your freezer for up to five days. This will cause any remaining bacteria or any remaining eggs to just completely die, and then you can launder as normal to make sure that they fall off. Clean the area where you store your clothes extremely well so that you make sure that you get rid of any eggs, any excess, anything that could have been left behind, and then you're good to store your clothes again. Obviously, thrifting is great because it saves us some money and it also saves the environment from garments to have to be produced, which just wastes a ton of water. But if you are gonna thrift an item, just please make sure that when you come home with it, put it into a Ziploc bag and the same thing we did with the moths, freeze it for up to five days. That way you're making sure that you're killing anything that could be on that particular garment and then you can launder it as normal before it goes into your wardrobe. You will really prevent yourself a big headache because you never know what's in those things. Now, obviously when it comes to keeping our clothes looking new for as long as possible, the quality of the garment has a lot to do with it. So if you wanna see a video where I show you how to scope out the quality of a garment while you're shopping, regardless of price, let me know in the comments below. And also don't forget to leave me your favorite tip of how to best take care of your clothes. Don't forget to subscribe. I am here every single Thursday at 11 a.m. and I will see you next week. Bye. Anything that is very heavy and would blend one and would bend one of those flimsy what is this? You can't see what's going on below, but it's just like we're loosening the body.